So, John, can you tell us a little bit about the George Lloyd cycle, which the Ealing Symphony Orchestra is about to embark on? Uh, George Lloyd cycle is a, a really unique occasion. Uh, no one, as we know, has done the complete symphonies in order in a concert cycle. And so we're giving people the opportunity to hear this amazing music. Um, and if you hear it live in concert, rather than on a CD player or on the radio, you use your you get the full impact of the music. Not only do you listen to it, but you also can see what the orchestra's up to. It's, uh, the first symphony is a really extraordinary piece. Um, he's writing to the age of 19, and it's 1930s Britain. It's uh, full of energy, um, joie de vivre. And I, I think what comes through to me is wit. Not only is there very catchy melodic lines, even in the pub tonight, you can hear people still feeling all these things buzzing around their head. But he uses them in such a way that actually, whilst we're playing this, some, some cheeky little chappy comes in and makes a little that side, like trumpet, like goes, you know? and so there's so much fun and humour in the music. And perhaps the most extraordinary element in this music is the uh, jazz, jazzy clarinet solo towards the end of the piece, um, which is just like being listening to a big jazz band, and suddenly the, sax, the jazz, saxophone or clarinetist gets up and does a whole solo, and the rest of the band's just playing away, grooving away, and you've got this solo going on, and this is in the middle of a symphony. It's the most extraordinary, and it's like, what makes he written it like? It's, 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 it's an extraordinary moment, and I, I think it's a really exciting piece to listen to for that reason. So the cycle is going to be quite a special thing to accomplish. Why, why are these symphonies not played more often? Um, George Lloyd went completely out of fashion after the Second World War. Um, he writes tuneful music that's very accessible that any member of the general public coming along would be able to assimilate and get something out of the performance. Post-war Britain, uh, particularly after uh, the takeover of the BBC, um, we went down a very serial, modernistic element whereby anybody who wrote tunes, their music was no longer welcome. It was felt that the British public needed to be educated in listening to what many of us refer to as squeaky gate music. Um, so, much, much harder pieces to listen. Um, so these, are, these are accessible? So these symphonies are very, very accessible. But the same thing happened to other composers. Malcolm Arnold wrote uh, the Fourth Symphony, and then after the Fourth Symphony, the BBC didn't, weren't interested really in the later symphony because uh, the controller who had invited him to write the Fourth Symphony retired, and a new broom came in, and it was a very different atmosphere, a different world. Um, and so, then at the 20th cent 21st century, we've had this flip, of course. Now, accessibility of music has come very much back in. And you find it extraordinary when you listen to Radio 3 and you're hearing some incredibly approachable music, and yet people like George Lloyd, uh, even Sir Malcolm Arnold, are so rarely played. And these are, these are part of our bedrock culture, and these pieces should be played, and people should be given the opportunity to make their own minds up whether they think the music is any good.